A valuable lesson we've learned through the last 15 months in 15 countries is use the word plan loosely. Instead, we choose to follow ideas. Another one of our favorite signs, babe. And the idea of taking the back road 4x4 route to the Chilean border from Mendoza sounded like a good one. We don't take 4x4 required signs very seriously, as they often leave me disappointed when looking for a challenge. After the RP-13, I was surely not disappointed. And after that, the surprises really started to pile up. Well, this little detour has already been more than we expected. The switchbacks last night were kind of nuts. <laughs> I didn't even get any on camera. Uh, and we woke up in the middle of a cloud. So that's gonna make things a lot more interesting today. Might be a lot cooler, which is nice. I feel like I'm back in Canada. Yeah. You guys remember that view yesterday? That's fine. <laughs> We're not complaining. We can't complain. We haven't seen rain in like a, like months. So this feels good. And yeah, we've got about 110 kilometers off road, I think, to the next town. So it should be a good time. It poured last night. Cats and dogs. The whole farm. We'll see uh, what that has done to the road. <laughs> it was funny, we woke up in the middle of the night and we could hear streams. It sounded like a river and we're like, oh God, that wasn't there before. So yeah, landslides and washouts are uh, definitely a hazard that we're gonna be very aware of. The road, I believe that was once considered a highway, is basically a washout a riverbed that appears after a flood. In all honesty, we had planned to do most of this route basically on autopilot. There's that word plan again. Sentences to avoid, according to the plan. This wasn't part of the plan. I wasn't planning on it. What's your plan? A plan comes with structure. It comes with limitations and boundaries. The pressure of following a plan can become overwhelming. Instead, we've chosen to follow ideas. Ideas can be changed with ease. They can be challenged. Ideas come with room in their suitcase for something else, someone else. Ideas leave room for curiosity. After coming off the high of the seven-day Puna off-road route, we had little to no expectations for this track. Almost immediately, it became more technical than expected, and the storm from the night before had washed away any signs of previous tracks. A welcome challenge. from the riverbed and over the mountain. We're faced with five paths, and it's hard to know which is best. We'll take the middle path. Which one would you choose? Shelf roads and switchbacks. We ate them for breakfast in Peru. Here on the RP-13, they're a little more narrow and always seem to be leaning slightly towards the cliff edge. Stacy's increased frequency of being outside the vehicle quickly advises me of the risk we're often faced with. We're driving a house, and the squeaking of the camper leaning to the side as we go off camber is the cautionary reminder of what's on top of our Land Cruiser chassis.
not gonna lie, I seriously love seeing our chassis flexed up like that through these cross stitches. That's a pretty capable house. Good heavens. Oh, good heavens, it looks perfect. Well, if uh, Sean Whale ever watches this, I hope he's proud. What a roast. Damn. Two hours on the Barbie? Yum. <laughs> That's a roast. We made camp in the perfect silence of the desert. Peaceful mornings to clear our minds just so we can fill them again. I don't think we ever imagined loving the qualities of the desert this much, but we do. You may have noticed that really loud cracking noise as we were flexing through the ditches yesterday. Well, that happened before when we were in Ecuador and it was the radius arms. They just weren't quite torqued to spec. So I'm just gonna pull out the torque wrench and see if I crank them down and hopefully the noise goes away. These right here, the radius arms. These are the radius arm bolts. Now their torque spec is super high. It's like 130 foot pounds. You really got to crank on them. <clears throat> that one's tight. <clears throat> Often reminded that overlanding is just working on your vehicle in strange and exotic places. Although we're a day behind the plan that we originally talked about, these off-road routes where the only people we see are on motorcycles are always better than the highway. The real elephant in the room here is the fact that we've been driving on broken spark plug wires repaired with electrical tape for weeks now. We can't get them in Argentina. And as much as we'd love to keep adventuring, we've been walking on thin ice for too long now already. Well, I think we found a hill of seven colors. That's freaking nuts. It looks like an ice cream bowl. <laughs> it's purple and green, what the hell? Yeah. And turquoise? The Hill of Seven Colors, a bowl of pastel Neapolitan ice cream. Each color and rock is said to have formed during different time periods. 
neat. Proper European. <laughs> a snick. Yeah. Yep. Trying to look at the seven colors, but uh, definitely distracted by this perfect samurai. Just talking to him. It's year 2000, and they came linked front and rear. Look at that. That is just the perfect little unit. <laughs> I want one. Yeah. What? Jeez. What an incredible reward after 100 kilometers off-road. The RP-13 was a more than worthy, unexpected detour. And then, trees. Mucho. Look at all those trees. Wow, Uspalata. Uspalata. Directed by a recommendation from friends, we'll spend one more night before crossing the border. Oh yeah, there's, there's a little bit of water in there. We might get a... Slight refreshment. Right. We found the pool. into Chile today and apparently they are very strict about fruit, veggies, dairy, and meat. So we're making a kiwi lemonade this morning. Unfortunately uh, the, the tomatoes aren't really going to help with this recipe so they're going to have to go to the birds unfortunately. But yeah, country number 16. It's exciting. We're about an hour and a half drive away from our 16th border. Crazy. Our neighbors said they were sleeping in their rental car last night. <laughs> Look at that view of that car. Snowy mountain in the distance is the tallest mountain outside the Himalayas. If you're going to visit this national park, be advised, you cannot fly your drone. This would also lead to us not being allowed into the park. Arco Las Cuevas. Noted. However, that wasn't going to get us down, because this is perhaps the most epic border crossing we've ever seen.
enjoying this film and you'd like to support us, please hit that like button and consider subscribing if you're not already. It's free and it really does help us out. Up and over the Andes, this refugio marks the entrance into Chilean territory. You better hope you have all your papers if you've decided to come this way. Is that a nice film shot? I hope so. <laughs> and there's Chile. Until a tunnel was built in 1980, this was the only border crossing in this region of the Andes. Welcome to Chile. This is fun. This is okay. Cool, okay. cool border things. Yeah, we're just going into a spaceship. Yeah. About to get transported into Chile. <laughs> wow, that was a awesome border. Really straightforward, super easy. Really beautiful. <laughs> really beautiful. Definitely the most thorough search they've ever did. They were really. They thought we might have seeds or fruit. I was like. No, no, no. But she came, she came all the way in, and we got to show you the freaking tire carrier's broken, so you can barely get in. We'll show you that later. But oh man, it was funny. <laughs> She's like crawling in there. Oh, it was good. Yeah. It was good entertainment. She was good, good sport though. Yeah. And now we're officially in Chile. We're in Chile. Ski hill. Rad. Dang. Some big peaks. Also, how blue is this lake? That's max blue. How's it look? Uh, max blue, the most blue. <laughs> Bluest lake you've ever seen? Yep, that looks pretty blue. <laughs> seen more views in a border crossing town area ever. Now we have come to a toll. I mean, it shouldn't be a problem, except we don't have any Chilean pesos yet. So hopefully we can pay with card. Fingers crossed, everyone. Haha, -ha, we're free! <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to pay for going up the mountain. The base. That was a scary one! Oh, wait, this is.
isn't the Chinook. What? Oh no! <laughs> yes, it is true. We got a hostel. <laughs> we got rid of the Chinook. Are we still overlanders? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we like to get hostels when we enter big cities like this because we can't really just park on the side of the road. So. Well, we can, but we, we don't can. like camping on the side of the road. No. We're not very stealth. No. And we don't have a bathroom, so. And it's nice for some rest and rejuvenation, you know, just to chill, get totally. a bit of work done maybe, so. And if yeah. you do the work, you can find pretty good deals. Yeah, totally. Also, we need to be in the city so we can finally get the parts that we've needed for weeks now. So that's going to be an adventure today because we don't have phone plans. Matthew's phone just broke. My phone just broke. So, yeah, we have quite a long list of things to get, which will be... Uh, uh, interesting adventure today and usually we would just skip all of that and cut to the next scene but you're coming along for this yeah. one. One of the things we have to fix today is this. Our tire carrier does not open which means we can't get into the back of our truck very easily. Ask us how that went at the border when they wanted to look in the back of the truck. <laughs> it was hilarious. So something has gone on inside here. I don't really know what but I know that we need an inch and a half wrench to take out the bearings and have a look, and we don't have that. So, we gotta go find a mechanic. But first, we gotta go to the back. Nope. No what? <laughs> that bank didn't wanna give me money. All right, so. we're on a street full of banks. Oh my God, there's another cent. Oh wow, okay. One of these has to work. Yeah, okay, I don't know where I'm gonna park, Yeah, so you, you, got, you go fast. Yeah, you got cops and stuff, so. Okay, well, the cop just told me to move. I don't know, now I'm just like... No me entendió? No entiendo, lo siento, mi español es muy roto. Ya, ya. En la esquina, hay que hay una calle hacia adentro, ni Santander? Sí, uh, ya, hacia adentro. ¿Otro carril de derecha? Claro, claro, el carril de derecha. Ok. Bueno. Ahí voy a estacionar a marcar. Ok. Bueno, well, ahora tengo que ir a la next street, pero no tengo phone plan, so can't really, I can't tell Stacy where I'm going. Te saco hacia acá. Oh, here she comes. Te saco hacia acá para que tomes. Entiendo. Stay, hurry up. Nice, that was a thumbs up. We won? Yeah, kind of. Your uh, card word, my card is not happy. It's so weird when that happens. Yeah, it is weird. He's wearing his nice new shirt while doing mechanics. <laughs> Horrible. But also, with this unit. No bueno. <laughs> Does it look very nice in there? Well, I think the bearings are a little hooped because the grease left the chat. But we, I didn't get the bearings out, but I did just kind of cram a bunch of grease in there. And we can at least get into the back now. Hey. It does open now. It was doing some weird things before and not opening, but... And it's not clicking. We noticed in, even in between the these two holes, it would click. Yeah, so at least it's working now. I don't know if we're going to try and pull it apart again to replace the bearings. How many countries do we have left? <laughs> One. It's pretty amazing how these shops and mechanics in Latin America and perhaps all over the world are so welcoming to travelers. Like he just let us like use his tools for I don't know, like an hour. I was just like using his wrenches because I never wrenched that big. And yeah, he was just really, really kind and you know, offered up the space and the tools. And I was like, can I pay you? And he's like, no, no, please no, no. Okay. And that's happened so many times. It's, Pretty cool. Yeah. It's a pretty amazing community. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Sunday. <laughs> okay, All we right. are on the hunt now for parts. Off to find cables de bujillos. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a can and a plastic <laughs> bottle made friends. Yeah. How's the melon? Oh, it's so good, it's not sparkling at all. <laughs> That's, mine's flat. Si, yo necesito cables de bujillos para 2,400. Nice. 
6 segundos, 3 segundos más. Pero para el tren inmediato tengo solo las bujías. Solo las bujías, no Los cables. Los cables me llegarían mañana en la tarde. Mañana en la tarde. Exacto. Ok, okay no hay problema. Perfecto, ese es perfecto. <laughs> the classic Latin American street of all things auto parts. Maybe you need spark plug wires, a new door handle, that random clip you can't find anymore, or grab yourself a new engine while you're here. And of course, street food. Well, we did okay for day one. The uh, spark plug cables are proving to be a little difficult, but we ordered them from a guy who will hopefully have them tomorrow. We're also my... Okay. We're also trying to find another fan clutch because I think ours is doing weird things, but anyway. We got stuff for day one, not bad. Time to go get a bite to eat and find somewhere to camp tonight. There's just nowhere to camp. I mean, this is like trying to camp in LA, like Santiago is massive and trying to... <laughs> we have to come back into the city tomorrow, so like driving, you gotta drive like 30 or 40 kilometers to get out of the city and then we'd have to just come back tomorrow. It's just all kind of dumb, so. Well, after all that looking and striking out on Wi-Fi like a hundred times. Never a dull moment. <laughs> We finally got Wi-Fi and decided to just book at the same spot that... Because... They, oh, right. Because... They, they messaged us and were like, hey, you forgot this. Yeah. Like... What I, was it? Oh, it was our freaking laptop bag with the mouse, the charger. Yeah. It wasn't the laptop, thank God, but it was the bag that, you know... Oh, there's a lot of people at our hotel. Anyways, we're back to our roots. Yep. It's a safe street. We feel good about the place. We yep. know it. We figured we might as well just stay here again. So here we are. One more night. All right. Let's see if this air filter fits. This one's pretty gross from our last two off-road routes. We should have vacuum. A new guy. Nice. Perfect fit. Mauricio is the man. Nice. Nobody else. We went to like a dozen stores yesterday and nobody else could said get it these. it didn't exist. Yeah, they said it didn't exist. They're like, no, we don't have that here. Like, um, okay. But you have spark plugs? <laughs> you don't have the wires. Got it. Yeah, we got them. We got them. That is so exciting. Yeah, they're Do red. Do I want to know how much they were? They were 40,000. So 56 bucks. I thought sure. you thought they were going to be 100. I, I had no idea what, 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 what the base price is. So are. that's is that great. Right? Is that right? 56? I think. I think 10,000 is 14, something like that. I'll put it on the, I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> Street food on the go. You guys missed that, but we just bought kebabs out the window. Caused a bit of a traffic jam, but, yeah, but worth it. Yeah, meat sticks. Okay, time to do the, do the thing. We got the good spark plugs, the dual electrode, and they're Denso, which is rad. And yeah, we're gonna put these in and the new spark plug wires and we're gonna be ready to rock. So Stacy's really excited that they're red. Absolutely not at all. Red is not part of our color scheme. Coils looking good? Oh, yep, I did. <laughs> yeah, it pops up about, about two feet so we can stand up inside. This is uh, my least favorite of the chores that we do. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not very often. Uh, Chile really has their services figured out. That was uh, the easiest one yet, and they had the adapter, and no yeah. problem. We were actually almost empty. They put uh, just over 18, like 19 pounds in, so. Yeah, cool. and how much did it cost? Um, 
25,000. So that was a bit more expensive. That was about 30, just under 30 bucks. So it's like a bit more than a dollar a pound. But I mean, $30 every last eight time, months. Last time we filled up was Columbia. Like, yeah, before, right before Ecuador. Which was like August or September last year. Yeah, so that's a fine expense for me. Yeah. We've fully become European. Yeah. <laughs> that is some good looking bread. And some olive oil and balsamic in a really classy place. We're at the uh, taller, taller, taller the Mechanico, top. the tallest one around. Yep, tall yay. Uh, about to replace fuel pump number five. The in tank pump is kaput. Yep. This is uh, officially a plague that uh, hopefully we can be rid of because it is the black freaking plague. <laughs> Our fuel pump issues is, yeah, fuel pump just, yep, see you later. See yeah. you. See you. Yep. yep. Okay. So the uh, Walbro 255, whether we got a new one or not, uh, will. Um, not be on my list of spares ever. Oh, Matthew's just left on one of his <laughs> excursions with the mechanics. But honestly, <laughs> hilarious how many times Matthew's just like gone in a random vehicle with random strangers <laughs> to go look for parts. Thankfully, Sunday, the cruiser Chinook gave up the ghost just kilometers from the nearest town and not in the middle of our off-road route. These guys were awesome. They got us sorted out quick, and we've got a brand new fuel pump that is the correct pressure, and it's quiet, too, so that's a good sign. On the road again! <laughs> I just can't the wait to get on the road again. I, I've never seen that fuel tank come out so quickly. No. Very impressed. Those guys knew what they were doing. Um, the fuel pump doesn't, it hasn't even made a peep, which is crazy because the fuel pump that we put in, in Lima, the Intang fuel pump, as soon as we started the truck up, it was a little bit whiny, but we thought that was normal. We've I literally just been living. It's uh, the, the fuel pump we put in, in Lima has been so loud. And when I showed him this one, he was like, that's weird. Like, I, he didn't like it. And then he, uh, the one we put in is four bar. Uh, one bar is 14 PSI, so it's more PSI. And he was like, this is what you need. This is the best, all Toyota, blah, blah, blah. In Spanish, I didn't really get it. But, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're so happy Sunday. Sounds happy, we shall see. recent upgrades and maintenance to Sunday, he's running better than ever. We're feeling motivated, grateful, and inspired for where we are and how far we've come. We're in the land of green. We are in the land of green. It's cold. We are the only people wearing shorts, which is hilarious and awesome. Yep. We look like total tourists. Yep. But, but this is exciting. We're very close to the Argentina border. Yes, and uh, we are going to try and cross today, and then we'll be back to Chile soon. Oh, this but. is exciting. You have to stop and pay for the tunnel. Oh, uh, so you don't have to pay. It's just red because I guess there's it's a one-way tunnel, so... so oh. Yeah. <laughs> we pay on the other side, I guess. Oh. It's an egg tunnel. We're thrilled to see tall trees wrapped in green. The hints of yellow and orange indicate we're on time, but that the gap of changing seasons is closing.
Forest Reserve marks the border. The species we know as monkey puzzle trees thrive here and are thankfully protected. We've never seen any of this size before. Bridge is gone. <laughs> okay. Right, a little unexpected river crossing. Cool. Through the cleanest water I've ever seen. Yeah. Chile is so cool. It's so green and reminds us so much of home. And honestly, we could have stopped a hundred times today and camped on an insanely clear river. We could have just camped anywhere we want. We could have flown the drone over every single lake. Like it's picturesque around here. But we told ourselves a few months ago that we really, 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 really want to see Patagonia as the fall colors come alive. We want to see the leaves change. We want to beat the snow. We want to be able to hike, not in crampons. So we are making a push. Uh, so we're entering Argentina right now. It feels good. We're gonna be driving really fast, but we're gonna see so much cool stuff on the way. It feels completely surreal to be here. We're about to enter one of the most famous places, not only in South America, but in the entire world. I'm just gonna let that sink in and we'll see you in the next one.